So welcome everybody. Uh, this is a recorded session because some people wanted um, something they could refer to. And um, I'm very happy to oblige with that. I'm going to be going over some basics for the benefit of uh, people who maybe come to this recording new. And everything is a good reminder. We can't have enough reminders of the basics. And the first basic is, I'm not providing medical advice, obviously. Breathing is a very potent aid to health, uh, but obviously you should consult your medical practitioner about specific problems. Secondly, this isn't serious. You know, have some fun. Um, this is a play. This is a play with the breath and with the possibilities of the breath. And because you are unique, that play will be unique. So, so important in all matters, health and otherwise, to be your own authority. You are the arbiter of what works for you and what doesn't. And gauging what works for you depends on one thing, being able to sense what your body mind is telling you about the effect of these exercises, as well as the effect of diet, as well as the effects of other people upon you, as well as the effects of occupational circumstances, family, etc. Your body mind, through the right side of the brain, the so-called non-dominant hemisphere, is always trying to provide you with information about whether something is toxic, nurturing, or neutral. So the cultivation of sensing into the body, sensing into the body, in whatever circumstance we find ourselves with, whatever practice we are doing is absolutely crucial, the sense into the body. We do something and then we sense. We do something and then we sense. The sensing is as important as the doing. They are the yin and the yang of action. This is hard for most of us. We're living in a yang, fire culture. Everything is doing, doing, doing. Nothing stops. To take stock of what is happening. How is this affecting me? What are the messages I am getting? So the message is always sensing, giving as much value to sensing what is happening as a result of our practice. So we do a little, we sense a little. It's the same with Hatha Yoga. Do a posture, then you spend an equal time sensing how you feel with that posture, what is done for you. And of course, ideally, we do and sense at the same time. This means being completely out of the thinking mind. And all our practices are also, of course, practice at being beyond the thinking mind. This is a very important point. The only reality is sensing. Sensing directly what is happening. With eyes, with ears, with tactile sensation, with internal sensations. That is the only reality, what we are sensing in the here and now. Everything in the mind is all memory. It's all dead as a doorman. Uh, and whenever we're in our thinking mind, we are in effect, unless we're doing some needful planning, we are just in the dead zone. There's no life there. It's in the desert. So with the breathing practice, we are enhancing sensing and the demand for sensing 
and that brings us to life alone. The very fact of sensing brings us alive. So breathing and sensing, doing, sensing, and breathing. Let's do some practice. First of all, there is the default breath. When you're sitting quietly, in a reasonably comfortable, upright position, not stressed, calm, then we are in our default breath, in which most of the breath is through the diaphragm, so it's gentle, calm, slow, abdominal breathing through the nose. And just practicing the default breath, just watching the default breath. It's always varying. No two breaths are exactly alike. Just watching the default breath and relaxing and calming into that is incredibly therapeutic. If we're prepared to do that, the mind doesn't want to do it for a second. The mind doesn't want to be abandoned for uh, even a brief period of sensing. That's its nature. It wants to keep going. But relaxing into the default breath. Slow. Low. Calm, easy, abdominal breathing. This is very, very good. Just watching the breath come and go. Every breath is different. It's no right way. Whatever we're doing is right, just in that moment. We don't get into judgment. Judgment is the thinking mind. It's toxic. No judgment. Just sensation, awareness of the sensations of the breath and the movement of the abdomen. You can watch the sensations of the breath in the nostril if you wish. Or follow it down further through the through the respiratory tract, but just keep it simple. Just following the breath, the abdomen, and the nose, and keeping it calm and relaxed. Calm. Good. So with the breath, that is our default position. It's the natural, calm, and relaxed breath. Always return to that and know we're on solid ground. Now, the things we can do with the breath. There's inhalation, there's exhalation. And there are pauses at the top of the breath after we breathe in, and at the bottom of the breath when we breathe out. We can emphasize any of these, and they will have a different effect. When we emphasize inhalation, we stimulate the action side of the nervous system, so-called ergotropic, work-directed side of the nervous system and the sympathetic side of the autonomic nervous system. So we activate ourselves. And in yoga, in the breath we're about to do, there's an emphasis on the inhalation. Simplest way to do this is simply to do a sniffing breath like this. Or 
four sniffs. Vigorous sniffs. Emphasizing inhalation and activation. Nothing magic about the number four, four is a convenient number to sniff. But you can do six or eight or whatever feels right. You're the authority. So we do four now. Let's do four sniffs. Read that through now. And check out how you feel. Four more. Check out how you feel. One more for luck. Check out how you feel. Now we make that whole process more dynamic in the picking grapes exercise from the Arika gym. A-R-I-C-A, an organization which was flourishing many years ago. The Arika Gym. So, this is how it goes. You can do it sitting down. If you're doing it sitting down, I'm just going to move back a moment. Going to breathe in like this. Bring your hands up. So we hands on the shoulders and then we sniff four with our hands up. I'll go back a little further. I'm going back. One, two, three, four. Like this, looking four. One, two, three, four. And then we sniff four more. Same breath. Looking up and picking the grapes like this. So. First of all, we have to raise that. Then we go up. So, fourth exploration, we go down, up, fall back, four picking ribs. Good. That's the sitting down version. Let's do the standing up version in a second. Okay, you're standing, you go down, then up, down, up, So I'm going to do three of those. Let's see if we can do three, either stand or sit. But you go at your own pace. I'll do three.
and relax and stand and sing how you feel. So this is very dynamic and uh, you may feel invigorated from it, but you may not. It's no right way. And it needs practice. And it's a very good practice to do first thing in the morning. There are these three timekeepers which reset our biorhythm for the day. And we need to reset our biorhythm every day. It doesn't automatically reset itself. The circadian cycle, the daily cycle, which all other cycles in the body rely on, the cycle in the gut, even the cycle in individual cells, rely on that master timekeeper. And we have to reset the clock every morning. That's why the regularity of rising and going to bed every day is so important. And to do it in synchrony with the environment. So in the morning, ideally, we get up, we go outside, we expose our eyes to natural light for a good five minutes, and we move. Doesn't matter what you do to move, just walk around a little bit. But the picking grapes exercise is fantastically dynamic exercise to stimulate the body and say, hey, the, the day has started. There's light, there's movement, there's breathing, and there is then breakfast. Food, light, movement. Movement, light, food. These are the three, as the Germans call them, side gavers, time givers, to reset the clock. Very, very good stuff. Very good stuff. So a good thing to do first thing in the morning. Okay. And the next thing you can do in the morning is a retention exercise. It's the other thing we can do with the breath. We can retain air at the top of the breath cycle, or we can pause at the bottom of the breath cycle. We'll come to that part in a minute. So let's concentrate on retaining air at the top of the breath cycle. That just means breathing in and holding. Don't do it for too long. Mustn't be uncomfortable. With any of these exercises, at any point, you feel uncomfortable, dizzy, we have a pain somewhere, headache, we feel anxious, just stop, breathe through your nose. Because these symptoms will usually be the result of blowing off too much carbon dioxide and your blood getting a little bit alkaline. So you stop, breathe through your nose, and then you can put your hands over your nose and mouth and just re-breathe. Rebreathe the air until the symptom passes. Look after yourself. Don't go too fast. You, you can just pause your breath for a while if you're feeling a bit weird. Uh, and I've had to do that in the past. I. One of the one of the one of the areas where you can easily overbreathe and then start getting weird symptoms, including panic anxiety, is if you're giving a public talk. And um, in the past, I've given a been giving a seminar, which is say lasted all day, and sooner or later I start to feel a little bit woozy um, because I've been overbreathing. Talking is a very good way to overbreathe to make your breath irregular, to really screw up your uh, rhythmicity. So I've had to just stop and tell everybody to 
do a breathing exercise while I recover. This is horrible. But you may not want to do that in public, so just breathe through your nose or just pause your breathing for a few seconds. Now, retaining breath after the in-breath is strengthening, especially when you do it with a tensing of certain muscle groups, particularly your hands. So here's the exercise. You're standing, your knees are a little bit bent, the shoulders are relaxed. Always relax the shoulders. Breathing is so much improved. You relax the shoulders. You're not breathing through the shoulders, but just letting those shoulders go relaxes the whole system and improves the breathing. And what we're going to do is we're going to breathe in through our mouths. Hands out in front of us, then our fists and hold. And see how you feel. Sitting on the Breathing through the nose always. One more time. Clenching the wrists. Hold. And sensory. There are various variations. You can take your arms out to the side and hold. You can take them up in the air and hold. You just clench your fists down by your side. But I think bending the knees. When you bend your knees, pelvis drops forward. Holding out in front, and then you want to bend your knees a little bit more than that. Looking straight ahead. This is very strengthening. And it reminds us that our posture and our breathing often follow where we put our eyes. If we're looking up and out, our posture will tend to be more erect and our breathing will tend to be freer. As soon as we start looking down, everything goes down. So my mantra is, I might be out walking, or I'm working with the computer, or whatever I'm doing is look up, stand up, breathe. Look up, stand up, breathe. Look up, stand up. You know, as I get older, there's that greater tendency to stoop. As soon as you start stooping, you've got to be aware that this is not not good at all don't stoop look up stand up breathe it's a very healthy formula look up stand up breathe look up stand up breathe people who are depressed they're always looking down they don't look up 
It's very hard for them to look up. It's a real effort to look up, just to look forward. In that strengthening exercise we've just done, we look forward. We retain the breath. We feel the tension in our hands and arms. And this is very, what we might call, what the psychotherapists call ego syntonic. It's good, the sense of confidence, presence, and groundedness. Okay, good. So the next thing we, we can be aware of with the breath is the exhalation. Now the natural breath cycle is to breathe in, and then when we breathe out, and breathing out takes about one and a half times as long as breathing in generally. When we breathe out, there's a relaxation wave goes through the body. Breathing in, even a, a light breath, slightly activating. Breathing out is relaxing. Just remember, this wave of relaxation naturally flows through the body. We don't have to force it. We just have to become aware of it. That's the important thing. So if we're just sitting quietly and breathing, just become aware that on each out breath is a wave of relaxation. However subtle it may appear at first. Let's just sit quietly for a couple of minutes and just attempt to tune in to that subtle wave of relaxation which happens on the outlet. Good. You may notice as you practice this, that if you can relax into that natural way, which you don't have to cultivate, you don't have to sort of manipulate it in any way, it's there. This is a wonderful thing. The wave of relaxation is naturally present on every outlet. If you tune into it, you may find, of course, that you become more relaxed. And as you become more relaxed, your breath becomes slower and it becomes finer, it becomes subtler. 
when the breath starts to become supple, um, this is very healing. This is very healing to move into that subtle, fine breath where you're, as the uh, Pranayama teacher did say, you are absorbing Pranayama. You're absorbing life energy very efficiently into your body. Now, there are, of course, techniques where we emphasize the exhalation um, by counting and deliberately slowing the breath. And that's basically to enhance our sense that the exhalation is associated with relaxation. For example, um, if we're doing a breath to a count, and we always use a metronome, we always set it to one beat per second. And if we do a count of four in and six out, we are naturally following uh, the ratio of the inspiration to the expiration. And we're just giving ourselves a little bit more time on the exhalation to tune in to that relaxation thing. Just letting go on the exhalation. Just letting go on the exhalation. Just letting go. So uh, let's do some four, six, three. Four in and six out through the nose. Inhalation and exhalation always do the nose. And because I know that somehow um, the sound of the metronome doesn't get transmitted very well in these kinds of sessions, I'll be counting like in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if this doesn't suit you, if the exhalation feels strained uh, or you don't feel you're getting enough breath at any point in the breath cycle or you're running out of breath, just go back to your default breath or do a different ratio, which you have found in the past might be more healthy for you. But we'll try out the 4-6 ratio for a couple of minutes. Starting now. 2, 3, 4, out. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In, 2, 3, 4, out. 2, 3, 4, 5. Six in two three four out two three four five six in two three four out two three four five six in two three four out two three four five Six in two three four out two three four five six in two three four out two three four five six in two three four out two three four five six in two three four out two three four five six in 
two, two, four, out, two, three, four, five, six, in, 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 four, out, two, three, four, five, six, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, five, six, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, five, six, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, five, six, and finish. Boom. Check out how you do. What's your breathing done? That was the whole body. The beauty of this kind of practice is that you can do it anywhere. At any, at any time when you need just to center, stop center and you know, regroup. With all these little exercises, it's good to check out how you're feeling at the beginning. Compare with how you're feeling at the end. And of course, most of our, most of the feedback that our bodies give us is in the zone between our throat and our pelvis. Thorax and abdomen. This is where the whole, most of the feeling zone is. That's the zone that gives us most information. Of course, we will get information from other parts. A stiff neck, um, pain, in, pain in our head somewhere. Tense hands, uh, restless legs, whatever it is. But this feeling zone, chest and the abdomen, these are holding most of the inflammation. Good. Now you can, ex you can lengthen the exhalation to say four, eight. Or twelve, a one to two ratio, or a one to three ratio. There's one, there's four to eight, four to twelve. Uh, may suit you best, or they may not. You just have to experiment. Generally, we find a sweet spot that suits us best, suits our particular set of rooms. Um, suits our constitution, suits our biorhythms. So just experiment what feels best, what is most enhancing, what is most enhancing and valuable. You know, ultimately, we're looking for happiness and freedom from pain. Uh, and 
the best precondition for happiness and freedom of pain is maintaining a condition of calm alertness. Calm alertness. That's the base upon which everything else is based. If we're not calm, we are reactive and get ourselves into emotional trouble, just reacting to it. On the basis of what the Buddha described as craving and aversion, what we're attracted to and what we're repelled by. If we're not calm, we are reactive. If we're not alert, we're asleep. We don't know what's going on inside or outside. We get our and ourselves into trouble because we just don't know what's going on. So calm and alert is what we're in. We can't go wrong. We're seeking calm and alert. We're not seeking happiness, freedom from pain. All that will follow being calm and alert. Calm and alert. So we can emphasize inhalation, we can emphasize exhalation, we can emphasize retention at the top of in-breath. You can also emphasize stopping the breath, we'll call it retention, at the bottom of the breath after we've breathed out. So if we take deep breath, Breathe out. And just don't breathe in again. For a few seconds. And then resume our normal breathing. We just become aware of what it feels like to be at the bottom of the breath cycle without taking another breath, just to be momentarily at rest. Don't stay down there too long. Don't start getting real air hunger. You don't want any stress. But just give yourself a moment or two. But really feel that spot. Breathing in and Breathe out through your mouth if you wish. Oh. Natural breath. This is the exhalation. Carries on, carries on. It briefly stops before there's a new in-breath. That's the natural way we breathe. And I'm sure, as you're aware, some meditation methods emphasize continually being aware of that stop, that hold, a little gap at the bottom, because that gap is usually accompanied by the slowdown in thought. It's a little emptiness. It's a little bit of emptiness at the bottom of the breath. That emptiness being such a relief from the relentless activity of the brain and the body. Relentless activity. The thing that we always have to be aware of. Relentless activity, doing, 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 doing endlessly. It's, it's a form of madness. Doing, doing, a little screen, waiting for the next call, waiting for the next little ding. Ooh, what's that going to be? This relentless anticipation. Of the next experience. It's kind of mad. The bottom of the breath 
So a little tiny bit of relief from that. Let's just do that one more time. Deep breath. We'll have questions afterwards. I'm particularly interested in people's experience of that little stop, that little hold at the bottom of the bed. It's, it's the yin spot. Breathing in, you know, being strong, that's the yang spot. The yang hold, this is the yin hold, it's very passive. It's not doing, it's not thinking. Still for a moment. Okay. The next thing we can do with the breath is balance the breath. So we're balancing inhalation and exhalation, and therefore we're balancing activation and relaxation. And we do this by making the inhalation and the exhalation equal in time. Right. We know from the research on the heart rate and the natural rhythms of the heart that this balanced breath improves what is called heart rate variability. Normally, the heart isn't absolutely regular. If it's absolutely regular, that means the heart. There's something wrong with the heart. There's always variation like this. Always comes back to a norm, then speeds up a bit, slows down. Speeds up a bit, slows down a bit. It speeds up a little bit when we breathe in. It slows down a little bit when we breathe out. And that's the way everything in the body, and that's the way everything in nature works. It wobbles. Nothing is still. Everything wobbles to find the center. Everything wobbles to find the center. So important to know that. Got to wobble to find the center. And the balanced breath provides good wobbling. Improves heart rate variability and has a generally balancing effect on the autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic, parasympathetic parts of the nervous system. The research tends to indicate that the best timing for a balanced breath is to breathe in for six, one beat per second on the metronome, and to breathe out for six. For most people, that produces the maximum heart rate variability. But there's no right way. So, I know 6-6 six, six isn't for everybody. So we're just gonna do 4-4 four, four in a very relaxed way for two minutes. And again, I should say, in two, three, four, and out two, three, four. Starting now. In two, three, four. Out two, three, four. In two, three, four. Out two, three, four. In two, three, four. Out two, three. Four, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, two, three, 
four, out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, 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 in, two, four, out, two, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, and finish. Good. Check out how you feel. How does your breathing feel? How does your body feel? Sure you relax your shoulders. It can be a tendency to tense up. Um, if you're following your beat uh, and if you're slowing your breath. Uh, that goes after a while, after you've been very accustomed to doing any particular rhythm or any particular approach, but just be aware of tensing up when you're doing your practice. Um, I found that um, the four out wasn't enough for me, so... I'd be breathing out and then the fall and I'd have to come start breathing in again. And I, my body would go, hang on, I haven't expelled enough yet. And it would start to get um, agitated about because I hadn't breathed out enough and, but then had to breathe in again. So that's a, this is a very good point you're making. What was preventing you from carrying on breathing out? Because you started to breathe in again. <laughs> okay, so you were you were just following the four four. Yes. But you really want to do six. Yes, at least. Yeah. So look, when we do that practice in the future, just ignore me, obviously, and follow what is appropriate. You were following the natural ratio. Four to six. <laughs> that, that felt best for you. And that's right. That will that will feel best for many people. So uh, don't do the balanced breath. Just do what feels natural. Or do six in and six out. Mm -hmm. No? The four in felt reasonable. It was just the four out was like, I'd get to the four and I'd okay. go, I've got to breathe in. Oh, no. And there was this sort of slight, okay. but I haven't breathed out enough yet, so how am I going to get enough in if I haven't breathed out enough? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> But okay. yeah, oh. probably I'm probably more the six six. You may be a six <laughs> six person, and this brings up the point that you know we we need to experiment with different ratios. I'm most comfortable with eight eight, um, but fairly regularly 
go up through the register of ratios and come back down again. I start with 6-6, six, six, I go to 8-8, eight, eight, I go to 10-10, ten, ten, I go to 12-12. Twelve, twelve. I might go a little bit higher, but 12-12 twelve, twelve is still comfortable without straining. Yeah. And then I come back down again and feel where in that register I'm still most comfortable. And that's, okay. not, a bad, that's not a bad way of doing it. Um, um, I think I've mentioned in the past that I usually do, if I'm trying to calm myself down, I do say I'll start with four in, then go to eight out, five in, ten out, um, six in, yeah. twelve out. Yeah. And um, that's just what I've learned from another practice. Yeah. And so, yeah. and I can get to, I think, about 10 in, tw um, 20 out. And yes, that's then very I good. Come. That's very good. Yeah, so you have a good breath capacity. And this is a very good, you're providing a very good example of just experimenting and finding out what is best for you. Um, what part of a breath cycle to emphasize, um, what ratios to use. It's all to be played with and um, sensing what your self-regulation is telling you about what works. Yeah, very good. The other thing, and I don't know if this is relevant, but I find, again, probably because of what I've done in the past, if I breathe out through my mouth, I can control the out breath more than if I breathe out through my nose. Okay. Yes. Well, actually, of course, we have control um, through the mouth, breathing out, but we don't have control through the nose so much. Um, again, this is such a good point um, to bring up. You know, the only control we have, of course, when we're breathing out through the nose is through the diaphragm. Mm. To a lesser extent, the accessory muscles of respiration, rib cage. But of course, when we're breathing out through the mouth, we can control how much air comes up uh, out of our lips and through the back of our mouth. So we have more control. Uh, and that, that suits some people better, of course. But ultimately, it's of course also good to have complete control um, with the diaphragm. Uh, but this is. Again, um, for personal experimentation. So in that respect, would it be good to practice breathing out through my nose and trying to gain more control that way? I think, it, again, it would be something good to play with. But don't strain, you know. Don't, don't push it. Just, just experiment. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. And look, the last thing... Um, in this session, um, with respect to say balance, is to point out that um, the other balancing function is through the nose. Um, when we're breathing through the nose, the natural, one of the natural cycles of the brain, the so called ultradian rhythm, where we think the dominance of the brain changes every two or three hours, that's reflected in which nostril is more open. So there's a natural so-called nasal cycle where we're generally breathing more easily through one nostril than the other. And the one we're breathing through most easily reflects the fact that the opposite cerebral hemisphere is more active. That's a whole other piece. Sure, we'll spend some more time on that. So can I just touch on that? If you're breathing in through your right nostril mostly, then it's your left hemisphere that is that's right. more active. Right. And the left is the more creative side. Or is that I get confused. No, the left is the verbal side. Um it's the it's the mechanic. It's the uh, practical side, does serial time, it doesn't do emotion except anger, and uh, uh, it's um, an accountant. Uh, it's an accountant 
a storyteller and a mansplainer. In short, they even if you're female, <laughs> even if you're female, as we know, all all women have an inner man and all men have an inner woman. <laughs> uh, well, nearly all, maybe not. That's a whole topic for another time. And so if you then switch over to the left side, it then goes to the right hemisphere, which is the creative artistic side. If you're, well, yes. Okay. In, in a nutshell, yes. So we can use our breathing through the nose, deliberate manipulation of which nostril we're breathing through to provide some balance between the hemispheres, and that involves the a balanced nasal breath, alternate nostril breathing, breathing in through one nostril, breathing out through the opposite nostril, breathing in through the opposite nostril, breathing out through the nostril where we started, and so forth. In on the left, out to the right, in through the right, out to the left. Let's just do that for a moment. In one side, out the other, in that side, out through the nostril you start with. It doesn't matter where you start. Although generally we start in the, in the left nostril. We'll just do that for a minute and we'll do it to a count of four. So, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, out, two, three. Four, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, 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 four. In, two, three, four. Out, two, three, four. And good. Or, uh, is it correct you finish on the left side? Finish where you started, yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah, good. Good. So, uh, of course, there's a, there's a particular way of um, blocking the left and right nostril as we're doing it. We have two fingers on the bridge of our nose, and our ring finger closing one, and our thumb closing the other. But actually, the simplest thing to do is not to worry about manually blocking the nostrils at all, but just concentrate on one nostril when you're breathing in and concentrate on the sensations in the other nostril as you're breathing out. The sensation in your nostrils when you're breathing in will be cool. The sensation in your nostril when you're breathing out will be warm. So you just concentrate, for example, I'm breathing in through my left nostril. I'm just becoming aware of the cool sensation. Then I'm aware of the warm sensation in my other nostril, and I breathe out, and I'm just sitting in a relaxed way, and I'm not worrying about blocking off uh, the, the nostrils manually. And that's, again, a very useful thing to do when you're just sitting with your default breath. I'm just sitting calmly for a moment. My breath is becoming calm. And so, oh, I'm not sure that I'm going there. 
and then we just uh, say a little sigh of relaxation. And I'm just becoming aware of the breath in my nostrils, warm on the in-breath one side, so warm, so warm on the out-breath on one side, cool on the in-breath on the other. Good. That will do for today. Just remember, it's play. It's experimentation. You may slightly go outside your comfort zone in some of your experimentation, but don't go too far. You know, don't push yourself. It's all play. It's relaxed. It should be a bit of fun. Just experiment and be kind to yourself. Always be a friend to yourself in these matters and aware that judgment always comes in. Am I doing this right? Or I'm not doing this right. There's no right. Uh, there's no authority. You're the authority. I may have provided some pointers, but I'm not the authority. You're the authority. Just play with these possibilities. It's a play of possibility. A play of possibility in your own unique personal way. Thank you for coming.